What's up, guys? This is Vinyl Like Puma, and today I wanted to go over what I think are among some of the worst guns and weapons in Fallout 4. Now, before we start, this video is a remake of a video that I made almost three years ago that I wanted to go ahead and update. My old video doesn't take into account a lot of the newer weapons that were added through DLC, and there were also a lot of other items that I wanted to include, but simply didn't. So I think you'll find that if you enjoyed my last top 10 worst weapons in Fallout 4 video, you'll certainly enjoy this particular video as well, as it is greatly reworked from the original. However, without further ado, these will be 10 of what I think are among the worst weapons in Fallout 4, starting now. Number 10. The Meat Hook. When it comes to unarmed weapons, you don't really have a lot of choices, so it's sort of a shame that you would come across an awful one like the Meat Hook from the Far Harbor DLC. While I suppose it's not the weakest unarmed weapon in the entire game, the problem with the Meat Hook is that it actually has decent base damage, however it lacks any serious upgrade potential. Compared to other unarmed weapons like the Power Fist, which has a variety of interesting upgrades that greatly boost damage, or even compared to things like the Deathclaw Gauntlet or Boxing Glove, which have upgrades that can improve those weapons' damage potential by around 100%, the Meat Hook is stuck with an upgrade that seems to improve base damage by a measly 25% at best. Plus, when you consider that this is a DLC weapon and is likely not going to be obtained until the player has either beaten the game or after the player has at least reached level 15 or higher, you kind of have to wonder exactly who this weapon is for. Maybe it would be great as a potential early game weapon, however, since you can't even obtain this thing until much later on, you have to wonder what the point of it actually is. If you ask me, it's really a shame because a lot of the other weapons that were added with the Far Harbor DLC are quite good, and if this weapon does somehow end up returning in a future game, I just hope that the upgrade path is improved. Number 9. The Pipe Revolver While pipe weapons on the whole get a bad rap, one of the things that's nice about them is their flexibility. After all, you can seemingly convert them from pistols to rifles, or you can even change the type of ammo that they use. With this said though, I think there is one pipe weapon that is truly awful, and that is the Pipe Revolver. While the Pipe Revolver may possess some of the flexibility we might associate with other pipe weapons, its upgrades end up being weaker and have higher perk requirements than similar weapons. Case in point, a fully upgraded regular pipe gun that fires 38 caliber ammo will deal 19 damage per shot and require a gun nut perk rank of 2 to craft, while a 38 receiver for the pipe revolver deals 18 damage per shot and requires a gun nut perk rank of 3 to craft. A similar thing could be said for the pipe bolt action rifle, which is capable of more than 50 damage per shot and only requires a gun nut perk rank of 2 to craft, and a 308 receiver for the pipe revolver only deals 42 damage per shot and of course requires a gun nut perk rank of 3 to craft. The only reason I could think of that you would want to use the pipe revolver is if you were a pistol user and you wanted to use 45 caliber ammo. However, for what you will be paying in ammo costs, I think you'll find that something like the 44 pistol or even a pipe bolt action pistol would be far more practical. Number 8. The Salvaged Assaultron Head So, the Automatron DLC added a fair number of interesting weapons. While some of them are fairly good, like the Mr. Handy Buzzblade, and others are fairly decent, like the Tesla Rifle, I've got to say that the Assaultron weapons are both pretty bad. However, while the Assaultron Blade is just generally made obsolete by other weapons, the Salvaged Assaultron Head is what is really disappointing. After all, the Assaultrons that the player can encounter in the game have this really deadly charged beam attack that just sustains for several seconds, and I think you have to admit that the prospect of doing something like that with an in-game weapon would actually be really cool. Unfortunately for us though, what we ultimately got was a laser musket in pistol form that can deal rad damage to the player if they don't have enough rad resistance. While I suppose the salvaged assaultron head is stronger than the laser musket, I think its lack of upgrades definitely leaves something to be desired. 
after all, the laser musket's damage can be increased slightly, and you can get a 6 crank capacitor, which outstrips the salvaged assaultron head's 5 cranks. Plus, when you consider that the laser musket doesn't inflict rad damage on the player, I've got to say that the laser musket is just the better choice. I guess if this weapon manages to return in any future games, hopefully it's more like the Assaultron head laser that we all know and sort of fear. Number 7. The Syringer One of the cool things about Skyrim compared to Fallout 4 was a lot of the special powers and abilities that the player could take advantage of. For example, the ability to frenzy or paralyze enemies with various magic spells, potions, or enchanted weapons was a pretty cool effect and helped make the game's combat feel a lot more dynamic and interesting. Bethesda tried to incorporate a lot of these interesting mechanics and abilities into Fallout 4 with the Syringer, and while I think this wasn't necessarily a bad idea, the execution of this idea could have been a lot better. For starters, a lot of the components that are required to craft specific syringes are specific junk items rather than broken down junk resources. Instead of needing something like adhesive, steel, and acid to craft a syringe that deals damage, the player would need relatively obscure junk items like a rad scorpion stinger, antifreeze bottle, or even pencils to just craft certain items. Even in the case of syringes that are good, like the Berserk syringe or Endanger All syringe, the problem with these is the crafting components required are very obscure and not readily obtainable. And if they were more obtainable, I think that the syringer may actually be a lot more useful. I would really like to see the syringer return in future installments, however, I do think that the syringes need to be easier to craft. Number 6. The Walking Cane Along with other joke weapons from Bethesda like the Rolling Pin, Pool Cue, and Board, the Walking Cane seems to be part of a long lineage of god-awful melee weapons throughout the Fallout series. And while I must admit that it's pretty funny to see a raider charging me with something like a Rolling Pin or a Walking Cane, these are weapons that I would advise the player to avoid. When it comes to the walking cane in particular, it somehow manages to be worse than the rolling pin mostly due to the upgrades that are available for it and its low base damage. After all, at 4 strength and before perks, the walking cane is capable of dealing a measly 14 damage, and after upgrades, the walking cane is only dealing about 16 damage. Compared to other melee weapons with a medium attack speed like the Chinese Officer Sword, Machete, or Shish Kebab, these weapons not only sport higher base damage on average, but they also benefit more from actually being upgraded. Even the Rolling Pin, which is also awful, can receive an aluminum upgrade which further improves the damage, which makes you wonder why anyone would even use a walking cane in the first place. Ultimately, I don't think it's really controversial that the walking cane is bad, and I'm sure that like me, you two have grown when you've come upon a legendary variant of this weapon. Number 5. Anything 50 Caliber in case you weren't aware, 50 caliber weapons are straight up terrible in Fallout 4. Why? Well, the main problem with a lot of 50 caliber weapons, or should I say 50 caliber receivers for weapons, is that they more often than not don't deal enough damage to make the price of the ammo worth it. For example, a fully upgraded 308 hunting rifle deals about 55 damage, while a 50 caliber variant deals 64 damage per shot. Also, a fully upgraded 308 caliber pipe bolt action rifle or pistol deals about 51 damage per shot compared to the 59 damage per shot of its 50 caliber version. So all the upgrade to 50 caliber really does is provides you with the damage increase of about 8 to 9 points, which I would say is pretty insignificant. Additionally, 50 caliber bullets themselves cost 4 bottle caps per round when compared to 3 bottle caps per round for 308 caliber. And if you happen to play in survival mode, 50 caliber bullets weigh almost twice as much as 308 caliber. And with these things in mind, you really have to wonder whether the damage increase compared to 308 caliber and the increase in both ammo cost and ammo weights is really worth it. While 50 caliber weapons aren't the worst thing on this list, they're still pretty bad and should definitely be avoided by all Fallout 4 players. Number 4. 
the submachine gun. While this weapon gets some love because it's associated with the unique Spray and Pray SMG, I recommend that you avoid this weapon any other time you see it, as it is quite possibly one of the worst weapons in the game. To give you some idea, the submachine gun is about on par with a fully upgraded automatic pipe rifle in terms of damage and fire rate. And while that may not sound like much of a problem at first, you have to consider that the pipe rifle is a beginner's automatic weapon, while the submachine gun is something that's meant to be of much higher quality. After all, the submachine gun is using 45 caliber ammo, which is ammo that costs roughly three times as much as 38 caliber ammo. With this in mind, you may actually find that a pipe rifle with the explosive legendary effects may actually end up being better than a spray and pray if you can manage to find one. After all, 38 caliber ammo is a lot cheaper, and the damage before the explosive legendary effect is going to be the same. With that said, the spray and pray would have the advantage of having a superior magazine size, which would mean that you're potentially reloading less often. However, again, you're still firing ammo that costs three times as much. Ultimately, the ammo this weapon uses is what really hurts it. In fact, if this weapon was capable of using 38 caliber, 5mm, or 10mm ammo, it might actually be more useful, as those ammo types tend to be much cheaper and are also much lighter in survival mode. Hopefully, the submachine gun can return in a future Fallout game and be more practical. Number 3. The Flamer when it comes to heavy weapons in Fallout 4, I think it's fairly safe to say that the Flamer is quite possibly one of, if not the worst one available. While there are some other stinkers out there like the Fat Man Merv Launcher or even the Junk Jets, at least those weapons have upgrades that can either revert it to something that's actually quite good, or they have upgrades that don't actually end up making the weapon worse. Surprisingly, the Flamer has upgrades that make it worse. For example, let's say you want to improve the weapon's damage. In order to do so, you have to install the Napalm upgrade, which greatly increases the weapon's weight. Alternatively, you can install a new nozzle to further upgrade the Flamer's damage. However, this will usually decrease the Flamer's range, meaning that you will have to be closer to the enemy than you would otherwise need to be. Plus, when you consider that these damage increases total up to no more than 8 points, you really have to wonder if the drastic increases in weight and decrease to range is really worth it on a weapon that already has fairly low base damage. The only flamer that I would say is worth it in Fallout 4 is the Sergeant Ash flamer that's available in the Far Harbor DLC, and this is mostly because of its kneecapper effect, which makes it great against creatures. Otherwise, I think you'll find that between the lousy base damage, double-edged upgrades, and the relative obscurity of this weapon out in the wild, it's just impractical. And if you ask me, it's kind of a shame because the Flamer was actually a fairly decent weapon in previous titles. Number 2. The Acid Soaker I've got to admit that the Nuka World DLC added a lot of great new weapons. After all, things like the Western Revolver, Handmade Rifle, Disciple Blade, Rocket Bat, and Rocket Sledgehammer are all truly amazing weapons. However, it's worth mentioning that the Nuka World DLC isn't without its fair share of stinkers, like the Kami Whacker and Acid Soaker, and of the two, I've got to say that the Acid Soaker is quite possibly one of the worst implemented weapons in the game. While the premise behind the Acid Soaker is actually quite good, after all, it's a poison weapon that deals damage over time and also reduces damage resistance of enemies, the problem is that the Acid Soaker's ammo is horrendously expensive to craft. After all, you will need 20 Acid, 2 Adhesive, and 8 Glass just to craft one shot for the Acid Soaker, making it very impractical to actually use. Especially when you consider that you'll need 400 acid, 40 adhesive, and 160 glass just to craft one full magazine. Otherwise, the acid soaker suffers from low base damage, a non-existent upgrade path, and incompatibility with most weapon-based perks. So, you can't even improve the weapon's damage capabilities in any real significant way. It's a shame that the Acid Soaker was so poorly implemented, because I think if it did have a solid upgrade path, 
better base damage and ammo that was actually practical to craft, the weapon could potentially be a lot of fun to use, especially to weaken the damage resistance of some of this game's tougher enemies. It is what it is, but I do have to admit that I wish this weapon was a lot better. Number 1. The Homing Beacon now, there's a chance that you may not have even heard of this weapon, but it's a grenade that can be obtained by the player after completing the Here There Be Monsters side quest on the Yanked submarine that's just off the coast of Boston. What this thing supposedly does is fire a nuke from the Yanked submarine that can be used to damage enemies. However, as you might expect, this weapon is plagued with numerous problems. In my experience, there seems to be a considerable delay between throwing the beacon and the subsequent nuke. In fact, you can throw this weapon, and it may take a while before the explosion actually occurs, making you wonder why you even picked it up in the first place. There also appears to be some type of cooldown that occurs while using this thing. Unlike a lot of other grenades that you can throw repeatedly for better damage, the homing beacon has a cooldown period which can definitely frustrate some players. However, I think the biggest problem with this item is how limited these things are. Upon completing the side quest, the player only receives three of these, meaning that you can only use these things three times, provided that you don't spawn yourself some more with console commands. And when you consider that this item can only be used outdoors and the nukes themselves can potentially collide with buildings, you have to wonder what the point of this thing even was. While I do have to admit that it is a pretty cool idea for a weapon, I'd rather just use a regular grenade. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like and also feel free to leave a comment with the word Tukus, which strangely enough is an alternative to saying Gluteus Maximus or Butt. I guess you could leave a comment with the word butt too, but I'll just let you guys make that decision. Otherwise guys, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, thank you all for watching, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.